All right, hitting the go live. And there we go. Excellent condition. Stream looks good. And I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. So just a moment early. Let's pull this one up. And so, hey there, everybody. How you doing today? So just getting everything set up for the live stream here. And I'm a couple of moments early, but that's all right. So today we're going to be two major subjects. We're going to be talking about uh, Drone Harmony and an interesting addition to it. Then we're going to talk about some of the equipment and software I use because I get asked a lot. So, by the way, let me know in the stream if there's uh, any residual background noise or anything because uh, we've got fans running here and swamp coolers and it's uh, it's been a toasty day here in Prescott. So it's a little warm in the studio right now, even with everything blowing in here. So, all right, this is looking good. Let me just double check the stream one more time. And there we go. Okay. So, streams, excellent condition. Good deal. So, just to let everybody know, every Wednesday we're doing live streams on channel now. And we're doing those at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Normally we used to do them on Mondays, early in the morning, 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. But with the heat that we're experiencing here in Arizona, I like to get out and do my client work and shooting early in the day. And uh, that way we're not out in the extreme heat with the drone or any of our other equipment. So, so that shift took place a couple of weeks ago. And I hope that folks are finding that the Wednesday live streams are good too. Um, if you have preferences, let me know in the comments below. So now we can get this one started. We're here we are basically four o'clock. So once again, welcome to the channel, everybody. My name is Rich Charpentier. I'm the channel host. And normally here we're talking about drones and building your small drone business and also your own small imaging business or growing it to something larger. So we do a lot of different drone topics. We don't do any of the drone news or anything here. We talk about practical applications and the tools that we're using so that we can share some of our ideas with you to help you start growing your drone business as well. So today we've got two main topics. Our first topic is about Drone Harmony. We've got something new there that is actually adding to, um, adding to my set of tools for doing my client jobs. And then we're gonna talk about the hardware and software that's in my studio and in use basically on a daily basis. Um, well, like OBS for streaming, what we're doing right now, that's not used on a daily basis. It's used a couple times a week, but we're going to go through and talk about some of the tools used and um, answer some of those questions that I regularly get on YouTube as far as, well, what are you using for software and hardware? So number one today on the live stream, I want to warn you an incoming call might be coming in today. So a storm came through, tornado touched down on base. We'll find out tomorrow. Wow, Corey. I am um, Jody's out on the East Coast right now, too. So she's experiencing some of the residual of it. I've got uh, old friends back in Deland, and I do remember going through some of those, uh, some of the hurricanes. Never fun. A lot of water, and we could use the water out here. All right. So, what I was starting to warn everyone of is normally I, I try to mute my phone and stuff, but it might be the case today that I do have a call coming in. I'm waiting on a call between twelve to five, kind of thing. Um, you know, they always call last minute. So if I have to, I'll be pausing the live stream and just turning the audio feed off if I get that call. I got a feeling they're not going to be calling. So with that said, let's start out. Let's talk about, so what's new and exciting with Drone Harmony? Well, for regular visitors to this channel, you know that we do a lot of raw land flying, and that seems to be increasing for us. So oftentimes we're contacted by brokers or builders or buyers and they would like flights of their raw land properties. And so we like to put together some pre-programmed routes sometimes, or at least mark out the areas that we're gonna be flying, like what you're seeing on this map right here. Um, so we're actually in the Drone Harmony web application, and I've pulled up one of the locations that we do the flying. Now, normally when I'm setting these up with Drone Harmony, we're tapping these out, we're actually creating uh, we're creating flight areas, so I'm just going to grab their polygon tool, and let's just say I'm creating this big flight area here, and there's my flight area, and that's uh, that's what I want to be flying today. 
but it's not exact and you know we're just kind of you know eyeballing it here and i've always liked the ability to actually put in corners uh with actual gps coordinates okay so normally when a client gets in touch and i want to look into the property i run over to the yavapai county interactive uh parcel maps and so you'll have to check in your area who provides similar information. But across the U.S., there are uh, similar applications usually feeding into ArcGIS. And this is where I can actually find out um, the GPS locations of the corners around the property. So if I'm defining a flight area for myself before I get out into the field, just so that I have a generic idea of the area that we're going to be flying, I always update things while I'm out there. But it's fantastic to be able to come in here, use the Avapai County Interactive Tax Map, and then pick the corners and get their GPS locations. So for the longest time, I've been utilizing Litchi um, when we're doing uh, progression videos. And Litchi allows me to make waypoints and actually plug in the exact GPS coordinates of each waypoint, which I've taken from the Avapai County Tax Maps. And when I'm doing flight models, when we're looking at doing a two-dimensional or three-dimensional flight, I will regularly utilize Ground Station Pro because once again, I can put those GPS coordinates in um, at each of my corners or each of my waypoint locations. And then I've got a really good idea of my flight area. Well, Drone Harmony, has recently added a new feature it's it's not super new it's been for a couple of weeks at least but um in one of my last conversations with them i got to see um this new setup and i was immediately wowed because it's answering one of the questions that i've had for a while which is i'd like to have just one uniform mobile application with me that can cover all the basis of what i do with litchi what i do with ground station pro what i do with map pilot and i can say we're basically there with Drone Harmony, so thanks for uh, thanks for including these new features, guys. So what am I talking about, everyone? I'm going to show you two different ways. Number one, I've already got some sites built in here, so I'm going to go load a site, Celestial View Trail, and I'm going to load the latest version of it. So this is something that I had created previously, and this one is also a uh, demonstration for doing terrain-aware flights. So if you recall. A couple of months ago, I started a new series utilizing Drone Harmony for documenting one of the construction sites that we're going to be working on this year. And that project has come to a standstill because we're waiting for them to break ground. So the property is already there. The plans are there. We're just waiting for them to break ground. So that's why we haven't followed up on the next installment of the Drone Harmony um, tutorial series here. But we will be seeing it in the near future, I promise. Once they break ground, and as a lot of us know, a lot of people on channel know, if you're doing anything with the construction industry, the home building industry, uh, real estate brokers, things have gotten a little kooky this year in 2021. We've seen some escalating costs for materials, delays on materials. So some of the projects that we were hoping to get started sooner are getting delayed by a little bit. But so what I wanted to show you on here, right now I have, Two different, uh, two different areas here. So I'm going to turn one of them off. So we have one for the terrain aware flight, and we have another one just set at the same altitude for our entire flight. So let's take a look at the um, at this model here. And this is actually the terrain aware one. You can actually see where things curve down, curve back up, and this will be a really good example actually for what we're talking about here with the fact that we can now affect our waypoints and actually update our waypoints with the exact GPS locations of the corners we're interested in. So I'm gonna go back out to the main mode here. And so we're just looking at this as a 2D top down. And I'm gonna click on my flight paths here. And as you will see, we're gonna zoom in. Here's all the waypoints generated when I set up this first flight. And we also have waypoints. Each of these waypoints, by the way, is giving their elevation. So we've got elevation changes from uh, 25 meters up to 41. What I'm going to do in here, so by the way, this is a new pop-out window. So we have an overview, and this will tell us 
how we set up our mission. So when I was building this mission, it was for seven miles an hour. Approximate time was 15 minutes and 42 seconds. Flight distance, uh, 2,950 meters. Max height was going to be 47 meters. And in the end, it generated 179 waypoints for me. And we have our Mavic 2 Pro is going to be the camera. But if I wanted to go over and let's say update this waypoint right here, because this is basically one of my corners. Here's what I really like in here. I can click on the specific waypoint. And if I do a right click on that waypoint, they've added something new into it. So we've got this new flyout menu where we could reset the at altitude. We could rotate where the camera is going to be. We could reset our gimbal. But the big one for me here now is that we actually do have this position and we have a location now where we can update the latitude and longitude. So this is awesome because this is one of the features that I find very valuable in my regular work when I'm doing ortho mosaics for customers. So the fact now that I can pop in here and update that latitude and longitude, pick my corners, pick where those waypoints were, and um, you know, know that I'm dead on for those particular waypoints that I've selected. So this has been a big plus for me. I was super excited when uh, one of the members of the Drone Harmony team shared this with me. And um, so if you are an Android user, if you're using Drone Harmony, this is another additional feature. They've got some more features coming this year. And full disclosure, I do do some tutorial lessons for them. So I'm not pitching them here, but I am I'm letting you guys know. Um, especially for Android users, because you don't have as big of a pool of tools available to you. Drone Harmony is looking to cover all of your flight needs. So I'm very impressed with this. I also like the uh, new pop-out menus. I like this as an option for myself. Now let's close this one down. I'm going to close this window down too. And we're going to just zoom ourselves back out to this particular site that we've built. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to close the main menu here. And I'm going to go ahead and clear everything off of here. So my areas and my plans, I'm just going to remove those. Guy's got a lead on a multifamily development project uh, looking for uh, GC's developers, looking for a project in Southeast Georgia. Hey, thanks for the um, thanks for the notification there, Corey. Let me pop this up so people can see this because this isn't a bad thing. So Corey's letting us know that um, he's got a lead on a development project. So they're... Uh, they're looking for folks in Southeast Georgia, so probably a little outside of your own service area, Corey. Awesome, thanks for letting folks know. So if uh, if you know anyone or you're somebody who could actually work with that project, drop Corey a note afterward, and, uh, or drop me a note uh, through the comments here, or you can always contact me through azdrone.net as well. That's awesome, thanks for uh, letting us know, Corey. All right, so back here on the Drone Harmony window, I'm going to go ahead and clear everything out of here. One of the big things that I do when I'm marking out areas for clients, if they're just looking for still images they're, or maybe they're looking for some video flights as well, is I do like to be able to block out flight areas as well. And usually these flight areas won't be exactly on target and we're going to be shooting outside of them depending on what we're framing up, what the gimbal's at, what our elevation is at with the drone. So. With that in mind, I like to block things out there as well. And I'm going to just show you really quick. We're going to go over to Litchi Mission Hub just so you can see how I block some of these flights out. And I'm just going to go down to my missions and open a recent mission. And let's go to Double Adobe. Um, let me see. Yeah, we'll go to Double Adobe Road. So this is one of our projects that we've been working on. I actually have some video of that project as well. So I defined an area for myself to fly in, just made a couple of waypoints in that area, and that gives me a great reference when I'm on the ground. And normally nine times out of 10, I am gonna be flying a little outside of these boundaries, but these boundaries are reference points for myself. But when I get there on the ground, I will actually be updating some of those uh, waypoints. Uh, so that the next time I come out, we're gonna be shooting from the same exact location same exact uh, gimbal tilt, uh, same speed if we're doing video. So I've always been, I've mostly been using Litchi to block these out. And now with, uh, with that latest feature and being able to, oh, I shouldn't have closed that one down yet um, on Mission Hub, or let me see here. 
with Gmission Hub. I got ahead of myself. I do apologize for that. So let's go back to that mission again. And we'll do double Adobe Road again. There we go. So when I'm laying these things out in the studio, if I go in here and I click on one of the waypoints, you will see latitude and longitude. So I can update this waypoint immediately. And um, that's going to show through on this flight path in Litchie for me. And so that was one of the things I really valued with them. That was something that uh, I've come to rely on on a regular basis when we're doing some of these raw land sites. And so what's great now is with Drone Harmony's edition where we can actually put in the direct latitude and longitude, it's giving me the same exact power and tools that I've been utilizing Litchie. So this is awesome. So one of the things that we can do when we're setting up a mission in, um, in Drone Harmony, number one, we can create polygon areas and building areas. But number two, we can also create lines. So down at the bottom, I'm getting a notification to find a line by clicking on the map. So let's say that we wanted to lay out this area. So I'm not being exact. I'm not even looking at my GPS coordinates yet. But by the way, check that out. When we uh, pop it right outside of the box here, we are seeing our latitude and longitude. So maybe if I need to shift this over by a little bit. And then let's come down here to the road. So this is not exact. I'm not trying to be exact right now. What I am trying to do is actually get these corners set up for myself. So this looks like that Litchie Mission Hub that I was just showing you moments ago. So once I'm satisfied with this, I'm going to go ahead and hit the finish. And now here I've got this blocked out area for myself. So I can now go out in the field and hook up Drone Harmony to my controller and to my drone. And I could pull up this specific mission and over on the right hand side. You'll see right now nothing is in sights because I've only done this one. I cleared everything else out. But under lines, it's actually showing me my line. So I could block out a couple other areas as well to make a couple of additional line missions. Let's do that. Let's make another line mission and let's just pretend that um, define a line by clicking on the map. So I'm going to click here. And I don't actually know what this parcel looks like at all. So I'm just I'm just laying this one out as a potential demo for you to give you an idea. And so there's my second one. I'm going to say finish to that. And let's see, SJ Owens, does Drone Harmony allow import of GPX KML? I think KML is a yes. We can check that out. Um, seems if pilots have access to vector parcel, you could import it exactly. Yes, you can. And um, so we'll take a look back over there, but I do believe that they're doing KML and I think KMZ as well. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. Um, they do have a series of tutorial videos, SJ, on their website. Uh, a couple of them are from me. A couple of them are from uh, internal staff as well. So you can check those out as well. But I knew, do know they've got some import features. So yes, you're spot on. We can do this. Um, we can do this with the KML or KMZs as well. I usually like doing these directly on here and taking my reference from the Yavapai Interactive Maps, but you are, you're, you're spot on. So there's several different ways to go at this. And um, so one of the things I wanted to show you over here now, we've got two sites. I haven't saved either of these sites yet, and I could in fact save them in the near future. But before I do that, I'm going to go back to line number one, and I'm going to just turn off visibility on line number two. And let's say that we do want to make this a mission, that we want to um, pop those corners in. No problem, SJ. And before we're done with this segment, I'm going to go back over to the main menu for you. We're going to take a look at those imports really quick. Um, and they also do allow for import of terrain-aware models as well, which is awesome. And that's where we left off in the project with them recently. So down in the lower right-hand corner, when we want to set up our flights and things, this is where we're going on Drone Harmony. We're going to hit this plus symbol. So if I had blocked out an area with the polygon tool, we could do that top-down flight. Um, we could do the perimeter flights. But in the case of what we're talking about today and what I'm after, I just wanted to get a linear scan. So we could do a simple top-down scan, or we can have the uh, gimbal angled at a different angle. We can have the drone's heading going one way while it's filming another way. So um, like a road or a pipeline, they say. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this one. And notice it's offering, so it's offering to actually do the multiple flight plans for me. So we can actually assemble several at the same time. So that second parcel that I was just showing you, 
you know, that I was just throwing in randomly, um, we could process both of these. So maybe you've got three parcels in a row, maybe they're in the same location, it's for the same broker or builder. So you can pre-plan multiple flights and Drone Harmony really does make the site management much more interesting. So we're gonna go with the first one here. So I'm just gonna, I'm picking that line. I'm gonna tell it to continue. And Drone Harmony always asks you to set a position for your lift off and landing. So, you know, that's where we're gonna be kind of calculating our above ground level from. So let's say that I'm parked over on this corner here. So there's my little pin for the takeoff. Um, use the same as the lift off for the landing. So we're not trying to do a movable home point or anything here. So lift off and landing positions were set. And now I can press continue on that. And it brings us into their two dimensional visualizer, which is great. So you can see this thing zipping along. So if we were doing a video mission right now, we've already got a flight path. You can also see if I zoom in here, there it goes, <laughs> there it goes. It's speeding right along. Let's, uh, I'm gonna set this to seven miles per hour here. So we've slowed it down just a little bit, but as we're seeing things go by, we can actually see where the drone is gonna be flying for us here, and also the area that's gonna be capturing. So right now, the camera is tilted straight down for us here. So this is telling me if we were to be flying this at seven miles an hour, let's slow this down to four miles an hour, shall we? And, um, Let's even slow it down more. This is not realistic. I'm not gonna have things going this slow, but it is showing me that flight path and where the gimbal is pointed to. So it's also telling me here, oh, at one mile an hour, it's gonna take 33 minutes. So yeah, that's a little too slow. Let's update that to two miles an hour. And now it's a 16 minute flight, three miles an hour. When we're using this as a point of reference, we don't even have to activate the mission we can manually fly along our edges afterwards. So you don't actually have to engage the missions if you don't want to, but of course you can. So we've got our estimated time, our distance of flight, our maximum flight ceiling that we're working with, 50 meters. And right now it's telling me that it has generated 70 waypoints to shoot from for me. And waypoint uploads, because one of the things you need to note with Drone Harmony and with all of them, DJI has this limit of 99 waypoints at a time uploaded um, to the drone. So other applications do it a little differently, but when, um, when Drone Harmony is doing um, a mission for you that goes over 99 waypoints, it's going to stop at that 99th waypoint. It's going to re-upload the next part of your flight mission, and then it's going to continue on with your mission. So some of the other apps do it a little different, first time that I saw it, it made me a little nervous. I saw my drone come to a stop in midair. And then I realized, oh, okay, there's a notification on screen for me letting me know that it's uploading my next 99 waypoints. So the first time you see it might give you a bit of a scare. Don't worry at all. That's exact. It's working exactly as it's supposed to. So we've got our line here. And then over on the left-hand side, let's take a look at our information. So right now, We've got the line, uh, we told it 50 meters above ground level. We've got an overlap of 75%. Probably do not need this in this. So now we've got fewer waypoints. So this is gonna save us. Like I said, I'm using this as a reference for getting some still images and normally video as well. As we can see, we do have a flight path here, this linear flight path. And there are some other options for us making up waypoint missions as well. I'm going to dial this back even further because we're not trying to make a model here. I'm making some reference points for myself and a flight path that I can utilize um, manually while I'm out on the location. So number one, I brought it down to 51% overlap. There's fewer waypoints here now. We're down to 36. Let's actually just pull that down to 40. So now this is gonna be a quicker mission for us, fewer waypoints and only one waypoint upload. Also on this screen, we could set a reverse direction so we could have it go in the opposite direction. We can even fine tune our gimbal afterward if we want to, um, and then return to home along the flight path. So when we're doing our return to home, it could cut across a field or something to us, or it can just follow the flight path that we've laid out to get back to home. Now, if we like everything about this one, we've got our scan set up down here on the lower left-hand corner, and I'm just gonna go, uh, let's, Let's call this linear scan live stream. And I'm gonna hit save. And I hope I'm not going too slow for you, but I don't wanna race past any of the details for you at all. 
So I'm going to go back here. And now we've got that flight path set up for us. And we've got all these little dots in here. But um, here's where it gets really interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and click onto this. Let's just move that flyout box, shall we? And you'll see that we set this up and we said, hey, we want this at 50 meters for all of the um, for all the waypoints. Our final estimated time on this, if we're going at seven miles per hour, is going to be four minutes and 40 seconds. And we're only getting 50 uh, or I'm sorry, 30 waypoints. Now, here's where all the excitement came in for me. We've already seen this on that grid mission. But I'm going to click on this particular waypoint. So we're looking at an individual waypoint. And if we right click on it, we've got some extra options and features here. So number one, there's that position. So this is uh, if you go back and watch through any of my live streams or any of my flight videos, I say this over and over again about being able to put the coordinates in myself so that I can get that exact reference from other locations. So here we go. I can come in here right now. And I can update those corners if I'd like to. And I can also update this mission. But so if I needed to pull those corners out further, let me move this away. So we're working on this one and only one. And we've got this second. So I'm just going to move these flyouts here. And I want you to take a watch. We're going to look at that position of 34.73. And let's say I needed to move this one a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and move this one out. And I'm going to right click in here again, and I'm going to look at that position. And we have made that move. So let's actually take this way up here now. And let's take a look at that position again. So we are moving things around. Um, I'm not going to save this change or anything, but I just wanted to let you know. So that is available right there for you. Now, other things that we can do, let's move this one back over. And let's give that a right click again, because we can go back through. Not only can we deal with position, we could reset the altitude if we need to. Um, we can reset the rotation of where that waypoint is looking at. So right now, as we look at this mission, you see the arrows from waypoint to waypoint. So it's pointing in the direction of travel. OK, let's close this one really quick and pick a different one here. And when I click on it, you can also see let's zoom in. It's showing me the area that it's going to be shooting towards. So there is the direction of where the camera is going to be going. And one of the nice things that we can do here, let's rotate this. And let's rotate this to right in here. OK, so let's say we want it facing just about south. So we can go through and update these. So if you're, let's say, doing a video flight around this location, you want some kind of orbit feel to this one, you can actually manually go through and update these if you want to. We can also reduce the number of waypoints we have. So we can remove some of these waypoints. And from waypoint to waypoint, we can have it curving um, our images afterward or our video afterward. So when I click onto this again, we can also set the gimbal. So right now, the gimbal is pointing straight down. Let's have it shooting straight out instead. And there are other ways to do this. I want you to know that right up front because they also do allow us to make waypoint missions flying with our drone. So one of the features that I like very much in Litchi is also available here. Um, we can also direct the waypoints at points of interest. So if I were to drop a point of interest, let's close these really quick. Let's zoom this back out really quickly. And let's say we had a point of interest that was maybe the center of the property and I wanted it right about here. Now I can go back in here, pick those waypoints. And so there we go. We've got that one that we were editing before and we could direct it at the point of interest, a so point of interest number one. Now, if we're looking at that, we are looking right out at point of interest number one. And under point of interest number one, we can set its height where we located it. Look at this. It's also telling us its position. So you could get really granular here. And if you really want to be, you know, stern about it, you could, you know, do the exact uh, GPS location of what you consider center of the property. So there we go. So basically, Drone Harmony has added a feature in recently that's been a feature that really drives a lot of my decisions and a lot of my flights for my clients. Now, at this point, 
with this newest feature in Drone Harmony, if I just want to go out in the field with only the Android and not using any other applications for the purposes that I'm using it for, we've pretty much got it covered now. So this was a really exciting one to me. I was so happy to find out about this and I let them know, you know, this is, this is one of those features that um, I really am building my business on. So fantastic that they actually did this one for us. And once again, when I'm done in here, I can go in and save this site. So we could call this linear, whoops, linear mission for live stream. And I can also give it some tags. So basically some keywords for looking up, because if you start piling up lots of sites under your site storage, you might want an easier way to find them. So I'm saving this mission here. Site was saved successfully. And so let's go take a look now under our sites. We now have linear mission for the live stream and we built that flight path as well. So we're good to go. I get out in the field with my Android device, um, get to the client location. I can just pull this mission right up. And like I said, I could just start flying the area using those boundaries as you know suggestions to myself, or we can set up a fancier mission like uh, one of our video progression missions where we're actually laying out multiple waypoints and we're having the drone do different turns and things as well. So there we go. And for further information that's not going as fast, you can always go over to their website, check out some of the tutorials, or look back at the Drone Harmony tutorials I have here on channel where I'm talking about that new project. So they're all 2021 videos. Now, before we go away, uh, SJ did have a question on importing data. So we can import sites, we can import areas, and we can import plans as well. So I'm just looking for a plan since you were asking. And so here we go. Um, DJI Pilot uh, compatible KML. Uh, so they do have that for the plans. Let's look at the areas really quick. So there's your KML and KMZ. And I know I was working my way from uh, the bottom of the list up. But so we do have KML and KMZ, so you can import those there. And um, then let's just see here really quick. So if you had DHM files. So in for me, um, the only things that I would be looking to import would be the KML and KMZs. So there you go, SJ. And, you know, I will say in uh, working with the folks at Drone Harmony and getting to do some of their videos, it's always been a lot of fun. Uh, very nice group of people. And they really do listen to clients because I have talked to them about other features that they have upcoming in the near future um, that were by requests from other clients. So if they, you know, if there's a demand for it, if there's a really good use case, they're they're very good at listening in to feedback from clients. So, you know, like I said, I was thrilled to pieces that they've actually, um, you know, added that ability to get right down to my GPS coordinates and. Um, you know, allowing me just to pop those exact limits in. So, you know, really nice and easy, just a right click on your corner waypoints, you can get everything set. And after you've done that, you could go back in and redo a new flight path. If you wanted to update and uh, do a more up-to-date flight path after you've made so, some of those changes, you can always go back down to that plus button right down there, create a completely new one, and then you could have both to work with. So you could have this line block number one and this line block number two. I got to say, I did not mean to go over this long on this one. I do apologize, but I wanted to get that out there. And I also wanted to answer SJ's question. But so for those of you Android users out there, double check those features, double check the app.droneharmony.com. And you will see that when you go in and look at your waypoints, you can do the right click and you can actually update your exact lat long. So. Very awesome. Give me one moment. I'm going to um, just pause the audio for a sec because my throat's a little dry. Just one more reason why I like the Rode Wireless Go. I love the one click, um, the one click, click tap. Um, to actually mute the devices. So that is completely awesome. All right, let's close down the drone harmony there. And by the way, so the reason why I had this map up today, I was discussing one of the larger parcels, uh, one of the larger projects that we do have coming up. And that is going to be 
a 700 acre area so that's this center section plus a couple other parcels around the area so i was getting some reference information and uh talking to one of the brokers we're dealing with so this morning i had this one up and hey it played right into the drone harmony video as well so all right there we go part two of today's thing wow have i just run over i do apologize folks but um i'm just gonna pull lightroom up here because part two of today uh intermission music needed absolutely so you know i still have some learning to do on obs i know there's a lot of additional things that i can do with obs and um i i do need to spend a little more time and see the other things because i would like to in the live streams also be able to play some of the some of the uh on computer audio for you now and again so we'll get there any obs experts out there drop me a line i, I would love to get some of your input all right so Oh, wrong mouse. I got to reach over to the iMac and let's see here. So I just wanted to answer the question. I do get these questions often in comments and private emails from folks through azdrone.net. And I really appreciate y'all getting in touch and I'm happy to answer the questions. But so time and time again, so what are you using? What's all the stuff you got here? So just a quick rundown right now today, we are doing the live stream on one of the Mac minis, the new M1 chip Mac mini that was purchased several months ago. The Mac Mini is specifically, it's all about my drone business. So I use it for running my photo editing because Photoshop is so much faster on this thing. And same with Lightroom. Um, so the Mac Mini is also tasked with doing uh, all my Final Cut work for my videos for my clients. So basically this is the media assembly post-processing machine, okay? So my number one used program on my computer not just the mac mini but just for years and years and years now the thing that i'm on the most is lightroom um that's where i manage all of my images my client images my own personal images so lightroom is the heavy hitter on this machine coming in behind that um is adobe photoshop for when we're doing our edits just to let you know i keep looking off to the right because that's my second computer setup so this is a 2017 imac and so I still do work on that. I do the regular day-to-day -day stuff on that. I also have MetaShape, which we'll mention a few on that. The machine's a lot slower than this M1. Um, the uh, rendering time for doing videos on this is just blazing fast compared to running anything on the 2017 iMac. I also do have one Windows box sitting off to my left and uh, a monitor for that. So I use that usually for web testing when I'm updating things or when clients get in touch and they're having issues online i will use that as a test platform as well that machine is rarely used for any of the business purposes in this business so all right so mac mini 2017 imac and a windows 10 box that i think we built back in 2015 so it's a little outdated i was kind of hoping that the windows platform could be used for web odm and for additional testing on it but this thing is just not the workhorse that it needs to be. All right, we started talking about, so what are the applications we're using? Once again, I said to you, um, Adobe Photoshop Lightroom. So by the way, this is from a recent flight, no edits or anything, just getting some extra clips. Um, the brokers like to see these things. The uh, builders like to see some of this too. Got some great feedback from, um, from uh, one of the builders the other day for a couple of flights that we did for them. Uh, they were absolutely thrilled with it, and they were also passing those flights along to the people who are going to be moving into those residences. So it's a lot of fun being part of making history for some of our clients. We're, we're dealing with the builders. They're passing it along to the folks who are going to be living in these homes. That's just absolutely awesome because hopefully it'll be something that they have to share with friends and family to show, you know, the that final home that they're going to be moving into. So yeah, Lightroom is up often and right along with Lightroom is Photoshop. So whenever I do the covers for the uh, YouTube uh, the YouTube videos or any of the intros and exits, I'm in Photoshop. So building these, uh, building these different little um, thumbnails that go onto the YouTube videos. And I use Photoshop in the regular day-to-day -day as well if we're cleaning up images. However, when it comes to cleaning up images lately, so I'm sorry, Photoshop, I'm throwing you under the bus a little bit. But when I'm just cleaning up images at this point, um, 
the one of the new favorites and this is thanks to last year somewhere in the november time frame thanks to some of my channel subscribers here somebody mentioned affinity photo to me i'd never used affinity photo before but i have to say that affinity photo has become a workhorse here as well because they've got some great tools their their magic brushes for removing things from 360s are just absolutely awesome so when you look at affinity photo it feels an awful lot like photoshop because we've got our layers we've got our toolbars over here and affinity photo i think i got it for 50 dollars, but i've seen them running some really great specials um, over the past couple of months and i have had other subscribers here on channel get in touch with me and say hey it's out for 35 dollars," so they grabbed affinity photo for 35 dollars uh, I'm not going to pull an image into this right now, but Affinity has become um, my correction go-to lately. So if I want to buff, uh, you know, like a 360 camera um, out of the Nader, I can do that really easy. And so one of the really nice things is you can actually do um, a 360 piano uh, layer. You can actually turn that on to zoom around in Affinity Photo for your 360 photos. And then you can actively go in and start editing the area that you want to correct. And then you can go back to that piano viewer again. So it's been fantastic. It's really shortened my time frame on repairing things and images. So yes, I'm still a heavy Photoshop user, but Affinity Photo has definitely found a place on my system here. So let's go back down here and um, yeah, we'll just uh, let's take a look here. We'll pull up that uh, Photoshop 2021 again. So you see some of the other things that we've done in here as well. And actually, let's go ahead and minimize that. And we'll just have Lightroom as the placeholder. All right. So the next one, we have been doing a lot of 360 work here. We're going to be talking about 360s again next week because I've got a couple of new things coming up. So we'll be looking at another 360 tour assembly where we're going to be using Kula.com again. Still absolutely enjoying their service. And I'm still a paying customer of theirs as well. So once again, you know, not sponsored by folks on this uh, on this channel. Ah, let's just pull up. So by the way, there's a concrete pour that we've gotten in video the other week. So that home's coming together. Um, so when we think of 360s, when I'm utilizing the um, Theta Z1, we can use the Theta Stitcher or we can use PT GUI. So Oftentimes, if it's not the Rico Theta and I'm doing things with the drone, then I'm going to be final assemblies of the 360s are going to occur with PT GUI. So that is the, another go-to app. So let's find it right here. PT GUI Pro. I believe it's 179 for the license. I have not upgraded to the latest version. But if you're doing a lot of 360 assembly, you can actually do batch loading for 360s with this. But PT GUI is kind of, you know, it's kind of the king of 360 stitching. So I do like the uh, Theta Stitcher, the Rico Stitcher, that launches from Lightroom. But if you're not a Lightroom user and, what do you call it, um, the Theta Stitcher is not standalone. There we go. Uh, PT GUI is a standalone application. So... When we're doing the higher end 360s, we are dealing with PT GUI. So I already mentioned Affinity Photo, and then also we just talked about uh, Dash brought up intermission music, and I said, hey, if there's any OBS experts out there, get in touch with me, because I'd love to know how to do more with this. Um, another one of the regularly used software packages that we have is OBS. So OBS is a streaming application that connects up to my YouTube channel for me. So you've seen this on screen sometimes. Here comes Infinity. So there is the OBS setup, and this is where I can do all the settings. I'm going to minimize this because these kind of screens make me a little nauseous. But uh, just so you can see it, so OBS is streaming us right now. So that's what the OBS interface looks like. So that is used at least once a week, sometimes twice a week when we do more than one live stream a week. Um, Next big one that's used here is Final Cut Pro. So those of you who are not Apple users, that's okay. You know, we've got DaVinci out there. We've got uh, Premiere Pro out there. And there are other editors as well. Um, I have had Final Cut Pro for many years now before I even started doing this kind of work for my clients because I had fun dabbling in it. And um, it was $300 for the license and I was allowed to put it on multiple systems. 
and I haven't had to pay an additional fee since then. Um, for Adobe Premiere, you know, you can do one of their monthly service plans, you know, one of their subscription plans. Then you can take check out the DaVinci Basic, or you can check out the DaVinci Higher End. So for Windows users, you do have other tools as well. Same thing for Mac users as well. You don't have to run out and get uh, Final Cut by any stretch of the imagination. A lot of this stuff can be accomplished with iMovie. So if you're not looking at, to lay out a lot of cash right now, there are uh, more cost-effective solutions for you. And then you can grow into that as you're building your business. So next one that I wanted to just point out, and I've had people ask about it as well, and we will be doing a longer Kino video this year, I do promise. We will get there. So Kino, let's go ahead and turn Lightroom off. Kino is my video management platform um, that I use to track all of my video clips from my client location. So here's Kino coming up. So there are a lot of fantastic features that Kino offers. You can utilize it as well to actually manage your still images, but you can't edit still images from it. So, you know, if Kino made that one extra step, they'd be some pretty serious competition for, um, for Lightroom. So when we're looking on here, I can actually go into my BenQ library over here. And if I select BenQ, I can have it display everything. So if I've got a folder with lots of subfolders, this is displaying absolutely everything for my videos right now. But if I wanted to get granular down to a specific topic, a specific, specific client job, I can get right into my clients and I can go down to one of the brokers that I'm working with and here comes everything for their projects. We can even drill down even further to project by project if we want to. So this has been an absolute lifesaver for me. I was just trying to manage things in you know a regular folder fashion um, for my video side. And literally the other year I just looked up um, Lightroom for video, you know, or things like Lightroom for video, and boom, Kino came right up for me. So you know, I can look at all the thumbnails here, or I can actually get into one of the videos. I can actually scrub through the video here. So there we go on, this was one of the shorter clips that I did, so I must have been setting up for something. Um, we can also go through label and keyword as well. And uh, let's take a look at this one. And so, like I said, we can scrub through these. So this is one of my orbits. So you can also set your start points and your end points. Um, and then you can export them to Final Cut. So you can actually pick the segments you want to bring into Final Cut. And they have a lot of export options in Kino. Um, they also have rendering options in Kino. Uh, you can rename, you can export your sub clips, or we can send them on over to Final Cut when they're ready to go. So we have a ton of options in Kino. So it's not just about management. You can also do some of your rendering in there. You can export directly into your Final Cut project in there and so much more. And notice I did not put tags in here yet. So I do have to go back through and do some tags. So Kino is another heavily used one. Whenever you see videos coming from here that aren't live streams, uh, that means that Kino is managing some of that video. Uh, so there we go. All right, next one on over MetaShape. So not on this machine, but the iMac next to me, MetaShape from Agisoft is the 2D and 3D modeling application that I utilize for uh, stitching together my uh, orthomosaic models or my 360 models. So MetaShape used to be called PhotoScan a couple years back. So when you look up MetaShape tutorials out there, you can also go way back and look at um, PhotoScan tutorials as well. And the company's name is Agisoft. Fantastic application for rendering two-dimensional and three-dimensional models. And they do have an introductory version for 3D modeling. So if you're just learning and practicing and you're still getting your head around modeling and uploading to different services that render the models for you, um, the MetaShape Standard Edition, I believe, is still $179 for the license. And um, so you can practice your 3D modeling with that. And if you get to a point where you have clients looking for two-dimensional um, digital elevation models, you know, terrain mapping, and also doing orthomosaics, 
then you could look at the higher end version. There are a lot of different um, rendering solutions out there. Metashape was the one that I selected because I got a lot of practice time on it because I, I decided to do what I just said to you, which was I used their Metashape standard just to learn on, practice my offloading, how we were rendering the projects. And then I moved on to the Metashape Pro afterward um, when there's a need for clients. So let me take a look over. Oh, I also had an honorable mention here on software on my system. And that honorable mention is um, the Yavapai County Interactive Tax Map. I seem to find myself on here multiple times a week looking up properties for clients and figuring out their flights. So, you know, web browsers always heavily used. We're all using that. But, you know, outside of that, you know, what are the big things we're doing? So that interactive tax map is huge for me and really helps me set up things for my clients. And then finally, just looking over um, my final list for some of my drone capture applications, regular subscribers here. You guys already know about this. So, uh, by the way, Dash, so Dash popped up here. Do you still use ODM? Um, I've, I've steered away from it. I've done some testing with it. You know, when I have the funds on hand to actually build a bigger mapping box, I will do it. The thing is, for me, since I have Metashape, um, I know how long it takes it to turn things out on that iMac. So, you know, that iMac, I'll turn everything off on it and just have it process models for me. I will say in my testing of WebODM, the models that I got to come out were really good. I really felt there was a lot of quality to it. It's just I've, I've got an underperforming machine for doing WebODM. And same on the uh, iMac 2017. Um, you know, it didn't have a lot of memory on it. So I was having issues with WebODM crashing when I was trying to render things. Now, I have had people give suggestions about a couple different setups, but I haven't played with it too much because... I've got my solution, I've got my uh, workflow for my clients, and you know, if we have a full week off at some point in time, maybe I'll go back and play with it again. But um, you know, if you have a higher end Windows box, I would say take a look into WebODM. So I'm not picking on it by any stretch of the imagination because the final results that I got out of it for some of my testing were good. I compared the Ortho Mosaic um, 2D models, um, Metashape, and WebODM and the outputs were very, very similar. So, you know, WebODM, it's open source. So if you're looking for a free option, that's one way to go. But just make sure that you've got a little more power to your system uh, so that you don't experience the kind of crashes that I did. So finally, I wanted to talk about the drone capture applications for those people who are regular to this channel. You know the ones that I'm singing the praises of. So Litchi has been a fan favorite of mine for quite some time. You know, I've been using it in a lot of different projects. I also use it just for doing some for fun flights and flights where I'm trying to capture something really interesting. I don't want to be using the control sticks. I want that nice, smooth, um, you know, beautiful video coming through. So I use Litchi heavily for that. I also use Ground Station Pro um, regularly and, of course, Drone Harmony and Map Pilot. With the new feature that we just talked about earlier in this with Drone Harmony, I'm going to start setting up some individual flight paths for new and upcoming clients, and I'm going to start using that. And the other thing that I didn't show you through on Drone Harmony was you can use your drone and your controller to go out and make waypoint missions as well, which is exactly what I do with Litchi as well. So there we go. Drone Harmony has that available to me now. And we can get those GPS, that exacting GPS information in, and then we can make our flight paths and have the drone perform different things like rotating clockwise while the drone and the body is moving counterclockwise. You know, we can uh, have it changing the uh, gimbal angle as it's going along. We can have it rotating as it's going through different areas, just like Litchi does for me. So the next couple of flights that I start doing for clients. Um, where I'm doing some of that video progression time lapse is going to be done with Drone Harmony because we really want to thoroughly test it and I'll let you know how it goes. But the testing that I've done with it before with their waypoint missions, it did exactly the same thing that I was getting from Litchi and from Ground Station Pro as well. Now, the one other thing I will say, so Ground Station Pro, I have not seen an update from them in quite some time. But 
we all know that Litchi does updates regularly. We know that Map Pilot up does updates regularly, and we know that Drone Harmony does updates regularly. So we know that we're always getting new tools from these particular ones. So if I were you, I'd keep my eyes on those. Like I said, you know, I've used Ground Station Pro for a long time, and I love a lot of the features of it. But the fact that DJI doesn't seem to be going anywhere further with it is concerning to me, and I'm wondering if they're going to end a life at at some point. And, um, you know, they haven't even updated their new drones to Ground Station Pro. So um, when you go look at the Ground Station Pro list, you'll notice that all the newer drones that have been coming out recently, none of them are on that Ground Station Pro um, supported list. So with that in mind, you know, I'd say we're, we're firmly looking at Litchi, uh, Drone Harmony, Map Pilot. These are going to be the go-to apps for a lot of us. And like I said, now with those updates, we're going we're gonna to see how well Drone Harmony performs, and maybe that's going to mean to me I don't have to carry so many devices out with me, which will be fine by me. So there we go. All right, everybody. I'm sorry I went so far over on the um, I did not mean to go that far along on Drone Harmony, but I wanted to show you those tools are now available to you. And um, so there we have the quick answers about the software that I use and um you know for my particular business and of course you know if i was a windows user i would probably be on adobe premiere for video or davinci for the video and you know i've gotten a lot of feedback from other uh, other folks here on channel who absolutely love both of those programs when it comes to video editing so if you guys would like to hear more uh video editing down the road let me know and we can do that and by the way so when we showed you kino quickly before I just wanted to take you through. So we did some orbits and some uh, some different flights. So I've saved several flight paths. But I'll just show you a little something from the other day's flight. This was back on June 1st. So I'm just pulling this right on out here. And I just wanted to point out, off to the left-hand side, keeping pace with my drone was the easy, um, the easy, uh, oh gosh, I can't think of it now. All I can think of is AZ drone for me, but the AZ crane service, there we go. So um, I see this particular crane vehicle out all over the place. I'm sure they've got more than one, but um, when uh, builders are putting up trusses and things, you'll see you'll see these guys uh, actually moving the trusses in. So we'll be getting to uh, video some of that in the near future. But so I just thought that was kind of funny. He was pacing right along and boy, did he come close to scratching my truck. Um, Turns out he was at the wrong job location. Uh, he needed to be right down the road there. So there we go. So very nice smooth transition and that nice curve turning back around to look in the other direction. You'll also note when we talked recently about the value of doing some of these progression videos for our clients, we can see the stockpiles of materials on this job site very easily as we came through on this particular pass. So that's going to give the builder and his contractors a really good idea of, you know, where are the materials, you know, what's going on. Um, are we missing materials? Do we have everything on hand? So um, I've already gotten reaction back on a couple of those videos, all still really super positive stuff. So it doesn't have to be overproduced. Most of our clients are looking for, you know, a simple visual representation of where they are in their construction project. All right, everyone, with that, we're going to wrap this one up today. As always, thanks for stopping in and hanging out for a little bit. Down in the lower right-hand corner, if you'd like to learn more about us or become one of our uh, Patreon members, we really do appreciate all the support from the Patreon community. Everybody's awesome. Um, also, if you're interested in some of our instructional series, you can go over to az-drone.teachable.com and see what we've got up right now. So and we will be producing more throughout this year as well. All right, everyone, I'm off. I hope you have a good evening uh, wherever you are. Well, evening for us, at least. I know some of you are overseas, uh, Australia. So totally different time of day over there. Well, everyone, you have an awesome rest of the day, whatever time of day it is. And we'll see you next Wednesday again. And for the patrons on the Patreon channel, we'll be doing another live Zoom meeting um, this coming Sunday. All right, everyone, have a great one. We'll be ending the stream now.